Paul Tassie at Forbes magazine was one of the biggest shills for Disney Star Wars, especially for the Acolyte. It was actually kind of fun to watch his back and forth, at least in their articles that were published on Forbes with other Forbes writers like Eric Kane, who didn't care much of anything for the show at all, like most of the rest of us. But Paul raises an interesting question in this article that we're going to discuss today about what does this actually mean? Because it seems like every single Star Wars Disney Plus show, at least of any significance up to now, is pretty much coming to an end. Paul Tassie says with the Acolyte canceled, almost every Disney Plus Star Wars series is ending. Right now, everyone is processing or celebrating uh, Disney canceling the Acolyte, the ambitious but expensive and barely watched series that created a culture war firestorm not seen since The Last Jedi. So credit to Paul Tassie for actually getting a few things right there. Uh, it was barely watched. It was the most poorly watched series. Um, and it probably did create a, create almost as much of a stir as The Last Jedi. I think Alan Ng was, was fair in his comments there. But behind the scenes, Paul says there is now a story that stretches beyond that, one that feels like Disney is almost pulling out of live action, high-budget Star Wars shows on Disney Plus altogether. Daniel Rickman put this together, and he's right. We are now at a point where, yes, future Star Wars movies are finally being developed again, but Disney Plus shows, they feel like they're skidding to a stop with only one confirmed series moving forward now out of more than half a dozen that we've seen. The Acolyte has been canceled. The upcoming Skeleton Crew is a limited series. Andor was always meant to be a two-season show and will end after the upcoming season two. Obi-Wan Kenobi may have Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen itching to make it more than a limited series, as they've said, but there has been no movement on that at all, nor should there be. Maybe they've learned. Book of Boba Fett was received terribly, and it will not get a season two. The planned Donald Glover Lando series is now a movie. Again, I wouldn't hold my breath on that. The planned Mandalorian spinoff Rangers of the New Republic was canceled, likely in part because of the Gina Carano debacle. Likely in most all part uh, because of the Gina Carano debacle. Then there's the Mandalorian, where it's unclear if season four will actually come into existence after the Mando and Grogu film is released. I would not bet on it. We just don't have enough details to know whether that could end up as a finale for their story or if season four is for sure going to happen. I would say that it's probably going to hinge largely on how well that that movie actually does. That leaves Ahsoka, and that's the only show we know for sure is getting a second season, and no other live-action Star Wars shows have even been announced. This opposed to a number of films in the works, from the return of Daisy Ridley's Ray to James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi movie. This is not entirely dissimilar to Marvel, and it has been a frequent pattern for MCU Disney Plus series not to get second seasons, with rare exceptions like Loki. I'll be honest, if, I'd be surprised if Loki gets a third, depending on how much they can cut the budget on it. Some uh, shows were meant to lead straight into movies like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Soldier and Ms. Marvel. Others lead to spinoffs like WandaVision turning into Agatha all along. So we can kind of see what's going on here. And and look, to his credit, Paul Tassi is, like I said, he's finally getting some things right here. Um, and part of this, like we've said before, like we covered earlier in the program, at the outset of this program, almost that whole first hour that we discussed a lot of this. This has to do, you've got to make Disney Plus profitable. Wall Street is out there screaming for profitability from Disney Plus. And it's not just about Disney Plus itself showing positive revenue quarter over quarter. It's about, number one, sustaining it. It's about, number two, growing it. And number three, and most importantly, Disney right now is desperately trying to prove that Disney Plus and Hulu, in tandem with Disney Plus, 
can actually long term over the next, it probably is going to take five or 10 years, at least maybe in Disney's mind, or maybe this is what they're trying to convince Wall Street of, that it will actually be able to one day replace in tandem with the ESPN streaming service. It will actually be able to replace the revenues and the profits that linear broadcast has through this point brought in. Wall Street is right now terrified that none of these studios, including Disney, will ever replace the losses from the cable subscription side with streaming. And they have good reason to fear that. But this is why a lot of these shows are, are being measured out far more these days, being looked at far more judiciously in terms of are we going to proceed with the show or not and what kind of budget are we going to green light with this? Okay, that's the deal. So when the Acolyte fails to perform, obviously, like we said earlier, the Acolyte did not meet the minimum threshold for Disney Star Wars on Disney Plus in terms of performance viewership. Andor is that minimum threshold. We know that now. Or at least Andor is at least somewhere above that minimum threshold, and the Acolyte is clearly beneath it. Okay? Because those two shows had about the same budget. They spent about $200 million on each show. But Tassie continues, there's a clear difference here in that a lot of other shows have at least been announced. Daredevil will return with Born Again. I'm not holding my breath on this being a good Daredevil show. I'll say that much. But the reason that Disney is doing it is because they have an actual measurable track record. All Disney is looking at is this was by far and away the most watched, most popular Marvel television show ever. And it was on Netflix. It wasn't even on Disney+. Plus. Daredevil has been viewed more, if memory serves, it's been a while since I looked at the numbers, but Daredevil had a much bigger viewership via Netflix than anything that Disney has had for Marvel on Disney+, Plus, including Loki, which was their high watermark, the first season of Loki. So they're thinking we can bring back Daredevil, bring back Charlie Cox, Put him in that suit, and we'll have a Netflix-level hit. I don't think it's going to go the way they want. That's just my opinion. It had better be a banger, but that's why they're doing it. And remember, Disney also spent a lot of extra money. Disney spent, I think it was an extra $100 million or, or more was, was the report, maybe $125 million, to buy out Daredevil, that series, and all of the adjacent series, the Jessica Jones, the Luke Cage, uh, the Ironheart, uh, Defenders, all that kind of stuff. They paid a lot of money to get that back away from Netflix, to buy out Netflix's ownership interest in it early to get it back to Disney+. Plus. Disney paid extra to get that back, okay? So they got money to make up during the Bob Iger spending spree days. Star Wars, uh, Paul Tassie says, it's a lot more bleak outside of The Mandalorian. It seems that Disney has likely not seen the return on investment they wanted on almost all of those series. Welcome to the game, Paul. Welcome to the game. Glad you finally made it. And they have clearly lost their way if they are spending $180 million on a brand new era. Brand new character series like The Acolyte, when that had 0% chance of ever being worth, quote-unquote, that much. I doubt Andor earned back what it cost, reportedly a quarter of a billion in value. But it was always meant to be a two-season project, and at least it was so good that it helped salvage some of Disney Star Wars era's reputation. Now, that being said, I didn't remember Andor being originally slated for a two-season project, as opposed to they finished season one and then greenlit a second. If that's the case, if that's true, and I'm misremembering it, which is entirely possible, I didn't really watch much of Andor, then that would justify what they're doing even more because a lot of the costs that they probably already took in season one, costumes, props, the ships, the digital constructs for a lot of the things they did in post-production, it's going to get reused or should get easily reused in season two, meaning that 
they shouldn't have to replicate all of those same costs again to make a season two. Hopefully it's going to shave off maybe at least 30, 40, 50 million dollars worth of stuff uh, that they don't have to redo again. Uh, and again, they'll, they'll have some film tax credits as well. Um, but but this is this is this is the issue. And this is kind of funny because you got to remember Paul Tassie weeks ago, and I'll go back, we'll put up a screenshot of the, the old articles here um, when we cut the video for this. But weeks ago, Paul Tassie was uh, screaming that 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 fans and Disney haters and old white dudes uh, didn't know what they were talking about. The acolyte was wonderful. Uh, it was amazing, and it's so awesome. Now it's it, he's licking his wounds. He knows that this was a dumpster fire. Uh, guys like Paul Tassie, Paul Tassie were in the minority on this show, and then there's just no other way around it. It was bar none. Uh, the the definitive fact for the I mean you can't you can't get around this fact the failure of this show, and I guess even Paul Tassie and I'll give him credit for coming around and for being honest about it because there's a lot of people out there that are still screaming and shilling. We've seen them on Twitter. Apparently, we've seen them on TikTok as well. Um, uh, and, and, and that's just, yeah, that's just how it goes. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.